Welcome to this video where we will learn how to compare logistic regression models. In this video, we will see how we can use the likelihood ratio test and a CAGS information criterion to compare logistic regression models. To illustrate how these tests work, we will use the same example data as we used in the basic lecture about logistic regression. This dataset consists of prostate-specific antigen concentrations in blood from 7 patients with prostate cancer and 7 healthy controls. We can plot the data like this, where the cancer patients are coded as 1s and the healthy controls as zeros. We then estimated the parameters B0 and B1 based on the data. By using a statistical software tool, the parameters B0 and B1 were estimated to negative 5.754 and 2.747. If we begin these coefficients in the equation, we can draw this curve that shows the predicted probability to have cancer over a range of different PSA concentrations. Based on this function, we can calculate the predicted probabilities for each data point. For example, if we plug in the PSA value of 2.1 in this equation, we see that the model would predict that the person in our dataset with a PSA level of 2.1 has prostate cancer is about 50%. By using the Bernoulli probability function, we calculated these probabilities. By summing the log of these probabilities, we could calculate the log likelihood of our proposed model. Note that the log likelihood has been calculated based on more exact values and not the rounded probabilities shown in the table. Then we did the same calculations for the null model, which is a model including just an intercept. The log likelihood of the null model was calculated to negative 9.704. Then we did the same calculations of the so called saturated model. Once we had worked out the log likelihoods of all three models, we could calculate the deviance. Since the log likelihood of the saturated model in logistic regression is equal to zero, could you exclude it from the calculations of the deviances? In the previous video, we calculated the null deviance to 19.41 and the residual deviance to 10.54. A good model should have as low residual deviance as possible relative to the null deviance. In our case, the residual deviance is much lower than the null deviance. We can use either a likely ratio test or calculate the AC value to compare if the proposed model is more appropriate than the null model. The likely ratio test can be used to compare two nested models. Note that the models are here expressed as probabilities. We can also express the model as logged odds, as we discussed in the basic lecture about logistic regression. We then have only linear terms on the right hand side in the equation. The proposed and the null model are nested because the proposed model contains all terms of the null model. The likelihood ratio test statistic is calculated by multiplying negative 2 by the log of the ratio of the likelihoods of the null and the proposed model. By using the logarithmic laws, we can express the log of the ratio as the log of the likelihood of the null model minus the log of the likelihood of the proposed model. The log of the likelihoods can be denoted like this. Let's use the following equation to calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic. These are the log likelihoods of the null and the proposed model that we calculated earlier. We plug in these values in the equation and calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic to about 
Another way to calculate the likelihood ratio test statistic is to calculate the difference between the null deviance and the residual deviance. These are the null and the residual deviances that we calculated earlier. If we plug in the two deviances, we see that the likelihood ratio test statistic is calculated to about 8.87, which is the exact same value we got from the previous calculations based on the log likelihoods. To understand why these two equations give the same result, let's reformulate this equation so that we will end up with this equation. Remember that the deviances in logistic regression are calculated like this. If you now formulate the likelihood ratio test statistic as the null deviance minus the residual deviance, we can factor this expression into this where we multiply the differences in the log likelihoods by negative 2. We see that this expression is now identical to this one. Thus, both these equations will give the same likelihood ratio test statistic. Remember that the likelihood ratio test statistic was calculated to 8.87. Usually, the likelihood ratio test statistic is assumed to follow a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the additional number of estimated parameters in the proposed model. Since the proposed model has one more estimated parameter than the null model, the degrees of freedom is equal to 1. The area that covers the right-hand side of the test statistic 8.87 in this distribution represents our p-value. The area of the p-value is equal to about 0 0.0029. Since the p-value is less than the general significance level of 0 0.05, we reject the null model in favor of our proposed model where the PSA concentration is used to predict prostate cancer. We can therefore conclude that the proposed model fits significantly better to the data compared to the null model. In other words, Adding the variable PSA to the null model significantly improves the model. Note that we can also use the likelihood ratio test to compare two competing models that are nested. For example, we might want to extend our proposed model by including the variable age. We can then use a likelihood ratio test to compare the two models with or without the variable age. The model with the fewest parameters is usually set as the null model, which represents the null hypothesis of the test. Another method to compare two models is to compute a CAX information criterion. This method also works to compare two models even though the two models are not nested. The so-called ASC value is calculated like this, where P is the number of estimated parameters in the model and double L is the log likelihood. To compare models, we calculate the AC value for the two competing models and select the model which has the lowest AC value. A low AC value is obtained for a model with few parameters and which is as high log likelihood as possible. A high log likelihood value means that the model fits well to the data. Models with more parameters generally fit better to the data. Therefore, to prevent overfitting, the model with more parameters get a penalty in the calculation of the AC value. Thus, the preferred model should be as simple as possible, but it should still fit relatively well to the data. Let's compare the proposed model with the null model by calculating the AC value of the two models. These are the log likelihood values for the two models. Let's plug in our log likelihood values for the null and the proposed model. Note that the proposed model gets a penalty because it has two estimated parameters, whereas the null model estimates only one parameter. However, the proposed model has a much higher log likelihood because it fits better to the data. We see that the proposed model has a lower AAC value compared to the null model. We select the model which has the lowest AAC value. 
The proposed model is therefore preferred over the null model. Note that we can use the archaic information criterion to compare two competing models. For example, we could compare two models with or without the explanatory variable age. We then select the model with the lowest IC value. This was the end of this lecture about how we can compare models with the likelihood ratio test and by the archaic information criterion.